Hello, welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. This lecture will be a continuation of our discussion of error control codes. If you recall, in the previous lecture, we implemented the repetition code on GNU radio and we saw that it was very effective in correcting errors. To rejog your, to recollect your, from your memory, if you have an N1 repetition code where N is chosen as an odd number, we could reliably correct up to N minus 1 upon 2 bit errors and conclude which bit was sent. And this reduced the bit error rate significantly. However, one key issue is that the rate is now 1 upon N, which is very, very poor. And if you make the block length much larger and larger, the rate suffers significantly. <coughs> In this lecture, we are going to study a class of linear block codes called the Hamming code. And the Hamming code is very special in that it allows you to correct a single bit error with, uh, with a much higher rate than, let's say, a repetition code. And it has several advantages in terms of its geometry and the way it is constructed that make for interesting understanding. Let us proceed. So we will go first on a discussion of perfect codes. And then we will talk about Hamming codes, which are a type of perfect codes. Then we will discuss syndrome-based error correction. If you recall, in the previous lectures also, we mentioned that if you compute the syndrome, that is multiplying the received bit vector by the parity check matrix, if you compare that syndrome with the various error pattern syndromes, you may be able to correct errors. And we will conclude with some other error control methods and a discussion on what other methods are commonly used. <clears throat> Just to re recollect, you know, uh, your, uh, refresh your memory, linear block codes are defined as, uh, you can define it using two parameters, n and k. Uh, an nk linear block code maps k bits to encoded bits using a linear transformation. If you recall, we preferred to implement that linear transformation using a matrix G and by convention, G is a matrix that has k rows and n columns. If it, since it has k rows and n columns, the message, k bit message is pre-multiplied as a vector or a row vector consisting of k bits. This results in an n bit vector, which is a code word and an n minus k cross n parity check matrix is a pair to this G and this n minus k cross n pair matrix H appears and when you post multiply any of the code words, the parity check matrix yields 0. In other words, the parity check matrix can be used to confirm that no error has occurred, typically. Syndromes are obtained by multiplication of any received bit vector with the parity check matrix. If h times the received bit vector, which is the syndrome, is 0, you can conclude that no errors have occurred. Of course, there could be many, many errors, but let's say typically no errors have occurred. And if you, however, get a non-zero syndrome, this non-zero syndrome can not only indicate where the error is, but it can also potentially correct it. It can indicate a presence of an error and maybe even tell you where the error has occurred. This we saw in the context of parity check matrices for, let's say, the parity check code where it indicated that an error had occurred, but for the repetition code, it also told you where the error was. We will now just briefly discuss this concept of perfect codes or perfect linear block codes. If you consider the 4, 2, double parity code with code words 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 0, 0, what are the generator and parity check matrices for this? So let's actually just do this. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, let's say 4 bit parity code 0 0 0 0 and we have 1 0 1 1 and I believe then we have yeah so it's like this <clears throat> you basically take the first two bits find their parity repeat it twice so 1 0 has parity 1 so 1 1 is repeated twice then you have because 1 0 has a parity of 1 1 plus 0 is 1 so you repeat 1 twice and finally, 1, 1, 0, 0. 
In other words, this is, an, this is a code basically where, oh, I should have not repeated this uh, here. Essentially, this should be 0, 1. Yeah. So it's like this. Whenever you find the parity of the first two elements, the first two elements parity is just repeated twice. So this is just like a cousin of the three bit parity code. If you remember the three bit parity code looked like this. These are the code words. You just have to append another. Here is, oops. Here you append a one. Here you append a one. You just duplicate the last element and you get this. This is basically this one, this 1011 appears, 0111 appears and so on, okay. So now, let us now figure out the generator matrix for this code. But for that, before that, let us actually do one thing. Let's find the generator matrix for this code. We already did it once, but let's just do it once again. So for this code, the 3 bit parity code, we will use the standard approach to construct the generator matrix. We will basically take two linearly independent code words. So in my case, I am going to choose 0, sorry, I am going to choose 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And let us also check the, find the parity check matrix. Uh, to find the parity check matrix, I will actually teach you a trick, okay. This trick will come in handy. If you write your generator matrix in the form i and let us say a matrix A. For example, in this case, i is identity, it is a 2 cross 2 identity matrix, in fact, i k, okay. And the remaining is a matrix k. So, obviously, this A has to be n minus k, sorry, n minus k, k cross n minus k, that is this A, okay. Then you know that h times g transpose should be equal to 0, okay. I will give you an easy way to construct h without having to go through any hassle. If you take h to be of the form a transpose i, in this case what should the size of i be, okay. So remember this a is going to be n minus k cross k, which means you have taken uh, this a, a, it's a transpose is going to be n minus k cross a, this i is going to be i n minus k, n minus k, okay. And if you now take this i, let me actually move this uh, elsewhere. and call this in note constructing h from g for, for this format, okay. Now, if you now use this h and perform hg transpose, that is equal to a transpose i i a transpose. Why? Because I just took transpose of G. So now this is equal to A transpose times I plus A transpose times I and in the modulo 2 arithmetic, this is equal to the 0 matrix. Therefore, this kind of G where you are bit, original bit 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 appear is called a systematic basically it is called a systematic linear block code and in a systematic linear block code, I will not cover it in detail, but you can see that since the code word appears, you are going to have an identity sitting in the front. If you have an identity sitting in the front, you just need to stick an identity sitting in the back and whatever remaining aspect over here is present. For example, here it is 1, 1, that 1, 1 will essentially become the transpose over here. Let us check, okay. So let us now do the 3 bit parity check matrix code and then we are going to write h as and let us use this approach to construct our h for this code. We are going to have i, k and a. So 
Here you are going to have A transpose. My A over here is 1, 1, 1, 1. And I am going to have an identity matrix of size n minus k. In this case, n minus k is 3 minus 2 and I am going to have 1. This is the parity check matrix. Okay. So, this is the parity check matrix for the 3 bit parity check code. Okay. So, now let us use this, this approach to construct the parity, 4 bit parity code for, sorry, the um, generator matrix and parity code for the 4 bit parity code. For the 4 bit parity check code, we are going to have G is equal to, and I am going to use the same approach. I am going to deliberately choose the linearly independent code words in such a way that I get identity in the left side of the G matrix. It is just like this. I am just going to write 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, which are both code words of this parity check code. So it is like 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. This is my G. And you can now clearly see that G is a two row, four column matrix and you can now split this as I and A. Let us now use the same trick that we, you know, used above to construct the parity check matrix. We have to now, if you take G as I and A, we then take A transpose and I. So I am going to just write A transpose, in this case it is 1, 1, 1, 1 and the I is going to be 4 minus 2 cross 2, so it is going to be Is this indeed the correct parity check matrix for this code? Let us check. So what are our code words? Our code words are the 0 code word. We do not need to check because h times 0 is going to be 0. 1, 0, 1 because of parity check 1, 0, 1, 1 and 1 and 1, 1, 0 and 0. Let us now just do this exercise. If you choose this, there is no problem. If you choose 1, 0, 1, 1, You have to add the first, the third and the fourth columns that will give you a syndrome of 0. If you do 0, 1, 1, 1, the, the thing is, if you notice these two columns are the same, these two columns are the same. So that is giving you an indication of the, the, a slight, pro, not problem literally, but an issue. Some non-uniqueness is present in this H. Of course, it is present in the G also because there is a linear dependence of the columns. But in the H, there is, it's definitely there. Similarly, H times 1, 1, 0, 0 is also 0, 0. Okay. So now let us actually take an interesting error event. Let's take E to be, okay. Let's take an error event, okay, where you have some bit flips which result in something non-unique. Let us actually make a guess over here, okay. So in the slide I have mentioned. 0, 1, 0, 0. Let us go with 0, 1, 0, 0. Of course, you, you, I have written it as a string. You can imagine it as a column. If you now, let us say that, let us not call this the error. Let us call this the received. Let us say this is my x. Now the question is, which code word was likely sent. This is the question. Now, if you have 0, 1, 0, 0, what is the syndrome? 1, 1. Great. 1, 1 is the syndrome. Now, the issue with 1, 1 is that you are unable to tell what the exact error happened is because this 1, 1 can result in an error in the first bit, the 1, 1 can result in an error in the second bit. Let us also understand it in terms of the decodability of the code. Let us say these are our code words and we have 0, 1, 0, 0. The most likely event is let us say a single bit flip. A single bit flip can result in 1, 1, 0, 0 because if you flip this or if you flip this one, it can result in 0, 0, 0, 0. Therefore, in terms of the minimum number of bit flips that are required to give you a valid code word, there is a problem because 
two different single bit flips result in a code word. Therefore, in this particular code, it is very evident that you cannot map every n bit sequence unambiguously to a single code word that is the most likely one because see what what the problem over here is this if you have 0 1 0 0 and this is a you know 1 0 0 and 0 1 0 0 are specific bit patterns for this code these error patterns will result in an ambiguity as to which sequence was sent let's actually let's actually try it let's say that i take 0 1 1 1 okay another example let's say that i take <coughs> 0, 1, 1, 1 plus the same bit error pattern 0, 1, 0, 0. What does it give me? I get 0, 0, 1, 1. If I do HX for this, again I get 1, 1. This is not surprising because as we recalled in the previous lectures, H times X where X is a code word plus an error is the same as H times E because H times code word is 0. Now, this indicates that you get 1, 1. How do you get 1, 1? That means the single bit error could have occurred here or the single bit error could have occurred here or there could be two bit errors which have occurred here. Let us ignore that two bit errors are unlikely. Now, a single bit error could have occurred here, single bit error could have occurred here which means that this 0, 1, 1, 1 by flipping this, sorry, by flipping this you will get sorry let us say we flip the second bit we get 0 0 ok so let me actually just uh, just uh, correct correct this ok let me not do it for the case of 0 1 1 1 I will do it for the case of let us say 1 1 0 0 that way it becomes a little easier to analyze so if you take 1 1 0 0 ok if you take 1 1 0 0 then you get 1 0 0 0 yes syndrome is still hx ok now if you hx is 1 1 since hx is 1 1 this indicates that if the single bit error has occurred then that error has occurred due to this column or this column meaning the sec first or the second position if you take 1 1 0 0 then by flipping the first one you get 0 1 0 0 by flipping the second one you get 1 0 0 0 neither of which is a code word ok. So, in this case also there is no way you can correct for this error because see if you have found out that the bit error has occurred due to a flip of the first or the second then 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 these are the possible code words you should get no they are not. Therefore, the problem with this particular code construction is that not all n bit vectors can be uniquely mapped to a single valid code word with the minimum number of bit flips and this is because of the ambiguity present inherently in the G and H. Let us do one more example. Okay. We have been doing this n length repetition code but I have deliberately and carefully chosen n as an odd number. Of course, you may say that an odd number is always a, a you know easy because if you have an odd number doing majority logic is very very unambiguous because if you have let us say 3 choosing best of 3 is easy. If you have 4 choosing best of 4 if you have 2 zeros and 2 ones becomes tricky. So, let us analyze this code. Four bit repetition code code words are G is very easy for repetition code. Again, we will use the same trick. This is I, this is uh, A, H is we will use A transpose I. Sanity check, In a, if you multiply 0, you get 0, if you multiply 1, 1, 1, 1, you get 0. This is the parity check matrix for this error control code. Okay. Now, there are some problems over here as well. Okay. 
Let us take we intuitively let us just say that you get x is equal to 0 1 1 0. It is very easy for you to check just like in the previous case that any single bit flip any single bit flip is not going to give you a code word because if you flip this one you get triple one three zero if you can flip this one you get zero zero one zero zero one zero 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 one 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 none of a single bit flips is going to give you a valid code word let us now look at two bit flips yeah if you look at two bit flips right then By the way, when you do two bit flips, all the sequences I am going to do are equally likely. How many possible two bit flips are there? There are several, but I am going to only list the code words that are possible. You will get either now the problem is that two bit flips, which are both equally likely events, right, are going to result in two different code words. Therefore, this particular code you know 4 bit repetition code it cannot be used to map all n bit sequences uniquely to a code word. So, this is also you know does not satisfy this unique decodability so to speak based on any n length sequence n length bit sequence that is given. So, one thing we are going to demand when we go towards the Hamming code is that for any n bit sequence that is received we want to be able to perform the minimum number of bit flips to result in a single unique code word. Let me give you an example of what is a good code word in that sense. 3 bit repetition ok. In a 3 bit repetition code g is 111 code words are 0 0 0 1 1 1. I am going to show you that minimum number of bit flips can be uniquely decoded 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 1. Here all of these the decoded code word is 0 0 0 all of these the decoded code word is 1 1 1. Why? Because in all of these cases the most likely event is 0 errors you know because if you want 1 minus p whole cube the next likely event is 1 bit flip which has the probability 1 p you know p into 1 minus p the whole square remember p is less than half in which case all of these uniquely give you 0 0 0 as the code word because see let us take 0 0 1 perform 1 bit flips is 1 0 1 a code word no 0 1 1 a code word no 0 0 0 a code word yes. So, performing a 1 bit flip will yield this code word uniquely similarly if you get 1 1 0 you can flip the first bit not a code word flip the second bit not a code word flip the third bit you get a code word one bit flip unambiguously gives you 111 as the potential code word that was sent. So, in this manner the full space of all 2 power 3 elements are mapped to a single element by the decoder without any ambiguity unlike in the case of the repetition code or even in the case of the parity check code there is always an ambiguity because single bit flip did not result in uh, bit vector you have to do 2 flips and with 2 flips resulted in multiple for example, you can verify that over here if you have 1 0 0 0 you get the syndrome is 1 1 that means you have to perform 2 bit flips which 2 bit flips all those questions are difficult to answer. Let us now go to go further. So, what are the generator and parity check matrices for this code? We just did it ok. You can just take the 3 2 parity check codes generator matrix and you can you know you find it is like 1 0 I believe it is and add another. This is the generator matrix and the parity check matrix also we just did there it was. and you can do it for the others. So, 0 1 0 0 we were basically saying you know you have to perform all the bit flips you will not get a unique answer that is the key because if you take 0 1 0 0 flipping this bit will give you 0 0 0 0 flipping this bit will give you 1 0 0 0. So, as a small aside we are going to 
discuss Hamming weight and distance. Okay. The Hamming weight of a bit vector x is the number of ones or the number of non-zero elements in x as denoted, denoted as wh of x. That is, for example, if you have, an, um, of course, wh is the number between 0 and n. For example, let us take n is equal to 3. If you take 0, 1, 0, the weight is 1 because it has 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, the weight is 3. 0, 0, 0, the weight is 0. So, in that sense, wh counts the number of ones. The Hamming distance dh between uh, n bit co n bit sequence x1 and n bit sequence x2 is the number of bits in, in which they differ. That is, it is the number of bits in which they differ. In other words, the find the XOR bitwise of those and count the number of ones. That is an easy way of finding the number of code words in which they, number of bits in which they differ. If you, for example, you have 0, 1, 0 and 0, 1, 1, these differ not in the first, not in the second, only in the third. What this is saying is you XOR these, you get 0, 0, 1. And then you count the number of ones, you get 1. So, this is a trick that you can play and makes it easy for computer implementation also. The Hamming distance dh of x1, x2 is wh of x1 plus x2. Now, I will outline the decoding strategy for linear block codes. If the received bit vector is y, I mean in this uh, in this case I am changing the notation, I am, if x is the code word, a valid code word and y is the received uh, sequence that is x plus noise, the closest in terms of Hamming distance from y is typically what you want as the received code word. In other words, if you get y, what is the minimum number of bit flips that I have to perform to get an x which is a valid code word? That is a question which you are asking. Why is this, uh, you know, why is this the best strategy? See, the most likely event that has occurred for p being less than half in a binary symmetric channel is that no errors have occurred, which means perform zero bit flips. The next likely event is that one bit error has occurred, so we will flip one of the bits and check whether we get a code word. The next likely event is two, and we keep, we keep performing this and finding out which of the these you know modifications results in a code word that is minimum distance from the actual code word x. In other words, we want to find out a y that has minimum Hamming distance from x where x is a valid code word. An alternative formulation and this is something that we have seen in some part earlier is that we want to find the least Hamming weight error pattern E such that h of x plus E which is h E is equal to h y then x is equal to y plus c e is the most likely valid code word. What are we saying? See, we are saying perform bit flips. Let us express these bit flips as a vector e with the smallest number of ones. Why? We just said that if no bit errors have occurred, choose e as the all zeros n bit sequence. If one bit error has occurred, then iterate over e being 1000010000010 and find out which of the he's is equal to hy. If you can figure this out, then x is y plus e. The problem is that this is not unique and if this hy being equal to he is unambiguous, like in the case of the three length repetition code, then we can always correct the error. Now, this is something that we will see in the next lecture onwards, where we will continue this discussion and build on top of this and talk about the single error correcting codes called Hamming codes. Thank you.